Oh. Um, so, we are live. I'm going to be talking about Children's Mental Health Week and apparently I've been blocked on Instagram. So I can't go live on Instagram, um, which is where I had advertised. Uh, that's shocking. So, better let everybody know. How disappointing. Right, let's see if I can see your comments or reactions. Um, this is... Hello, everybody. Disappointing, but... All right, it's wicked. So, I'm just going to let Instagram know that I'm blocked. I can't go live. It's not allowed. Um... Such a shame. Blocked by Insta from going live. Um, so, let's go. This week is Children's Mental Health Week. And the reason I wanted to come on and uh, talk about this, I just think it's really important we start the conversation. It's less about what we share and more about us making it okay and safe and normal to talk about mental health especially with our children key thing here is unless we look after our mental health it's really hard for us to support anybody else with theirs but it's not all doom and gloom i want to share my own story i am one of those stats that 50 percent of people who experience depression in adulthood would have had symptoms and signs by 14. <clears throat> I can probably remember depressive feelings, suicidal ideations from before 14. Now, if any of these topics trigger you, I want you to know um, I am not a mental health professional, but I can refer you. There are places you can go to get support. We are sharing that again through the Place to Be charity Mental Health Week it was started by them. We've been sharing advice on where to go. I put it up onto my Instagram this morning. You can text to 85258 support for 24 hour access for support for us for young children. <clears throat> and also you'll be eligible as an adult. So if any of the conversation triggers you, reach out, DM. I'm more than happy to refer you, assign post you to a mental health professional. Key thing is that we start the conversation, know that it is okay to share or reach out to people. The key thing is that we make this an acceptable, normal part of everyday engagement and liaison. And um, there was another part, what I was gonna say, which I've forgotten, well, yeah, that I'm not a mental health professional, but I'm gonna share my lived experience, but also my experience of being a mother to two young children, to two boys. Where do I, I've got my notes. I always have my notes, because you know, like me, I can just go off on one. So, like, what's your experience of children's mental health? What comes up for you? What do you think when you hear this? And I think it can be quite daunting. Not to alarm anyone, I have been contacted in the past and I've worked with young teens, referred via their mums because of body image issues. So for me, in my work as a nutrition coach, mental health underpins everything I do. A, because of my own journey with diagnosed and lifetimes of, like a lifetime experience of in and out of depression and anxiety. Um, but B, because what we eat really significantly impacts our mental well-being. Therefore, what we feed our children, not just food, what they see, what they hear, what they feel, and what they eat is going to significantly impact their mental health. One of the tools I use on my clients and we keep at home is the Wheel of Emotions. So this is a really cool tool. It's not designed by me. I just use it. And what we have is a circular uh, diagram that includes some feelings. There you can see anger, fear, love, and in our home, if anyone's feeling any kind of way, we refer to the wheel of emotions. Now, my eight-year-old is really reluctant. He doesn't like to talk about feelings. He doesn't want to talk about feelings. However, 
with the motivation of once we've had the conversation and you share, you can have X or Y, not food, we don't reward with food, but he can have screen time, he can carry on and go and play. He tends to be more receptive and you'll know if your child is fobbing you off. However, it's important that we get used to our feelings and get familiar with how we feel before we can help them navigate. So how we've grown together, because the theme of this year's Mental Health Week for Children is growing together, is we all talk about our feelings. If I have been impatient, flustered, annoyed, I say, I am feeling, name the feeling, so I might need a minute, or I spoke to you in that way and I apologize, I am feeling better now. But it's very important to recognize I am feeling. Feelings are transient they don't last they don't stick good pre um, intuitive knowledge talks about this it's really key that if i am feeling hungry and feeling angry and hungry it can pass whereas if you say i'm angry you're putting yourself into the state of i'm an angry person i'm angry and we can't be it's a feeling it comes and goes right does that make sense so i am feeling angry almost removes you from the feeling that you can recognize it go in to the wheel and it can help you explore whether it's envy disgust irritability and lay it down so there's three tiers you can then have a look at whether it's aggravated annoyed so you can really explore the depth of i am angry and do the same with the children so my little one's really good at it because I started this work when he was quite small. But with my eight-year-old, we still, you know, we have trying to sort of embed this and make it into a habit. So feelings, Will. As adults and for our children, let's get familiar with how we are feeling. I am feeling angry. I am feeling sad. And name them, don't suppress them. <clears throat> the other thing I found really helpful and I really wish I'd had this growing up. You know, we're meant to have a spectrum of feelings. That's why this, this wheel is so cool, right? We're not meant to just sit in the sphere of happy and positive feelings. We are meant to experience a rainbow, a, like a myriad of emotions. And by knowing that and exploring that with yourself, with your children, you start to normalize that we don't just sit in happy bubbles. So that's toxic positivity, right? You can't live in awareness and present, being present all the time. We're human. Someone beeps, something happens, you know, you're meant to experience different feelings. One of the things that really helped my son was the Big Life Journal. So there's, this is um, an American brand, but I, I couldn't, when he was four or five, I couldn't find one in the UK, but we've got the Happy Journal in the UK. And what they do is they really help your children explore some of those black and white, all or nothing feelings. So my friend, my son fell out with his friends. He thought, that's it, like it's over. If they don't speak to me by the end of this week, it's over, like we'll never be friends again. Children can really see things as finite, like that's it, it's done. And I try to help by sitting in the moment and saying, baby, this is not gonna last forever. I promise you this moment will pass, but let's talk about how you feel now because it probably feels really sucky. So what the Big Life Journal helped me do with my son, it's all about growth mindset. It gets them to explore things. So we talk about the brain being a muscle and growing our brain. There's lots of exercises that you can complete. So coloring in, and I love that. Look at that, I believe in myself. How many of us need something like that, a reminder like that? Um, and it asks you what's the most, who the most interesting person is to you, what makes this person so interesting. So you're exploring things about you and others that is not aesthetical. Why is that important? Because a lot of people just are, oh, you look good. I like your colored eyes. I like your hair. I like your clothes. But what about that person within? What do we find interesting about them? So we explore things in our home. For example, when that happened with his friends, you know, we don't want to pick on one another based on our physical looks, because why did you choose that friend? You're so creative, you're so adventurous, you're great at drawing and designing games for your friends and you to play that gets them really like engaged and excited rather than, 
oh, look at you, you're really strong. Because what if one day you're not feeling physically strong? You want to go back into those values of yourself as an individual. That's something I feel I really lacked growing up. Um, and, and a big reason for much of my um, depression and a lot of other South Asian women, we look very much to the extrinsic, right? We've got to look the part, play the part, but we're not feeling heard. So we often don't know what we're good at, what makes us happy, what brings us genuine joy. And that, and that took me a number of years in my 30s, late 20s, to navigate back into. So books like this, really, um, again, helpful, like I am grateful, so they can color it in. So as you can see, he's got a preference to coloring and drawing and write, and, sorry, like coloring his own way, but he drew his favorite people. Um, and they've got more things, challenges make you stronger. So when something does happen with our children, we try to sit and help them navigate it, but we explain that once you've experienced this and gone through it, it will get easier the more you experience it. But actually we can't avoid the difficult experience of friends falling out, name calling. You know, I've got a son who has a top knot. He's got jura. He's a, a practicing Sikh, so he keeps his hair long. And that means sometimes his appearance can attract negativity. So the way we grow through that together is always remind him, if you changed your hair, what would you change next? Would you change eyes, shoe, like, you know, feet, hands? How much and what length would you go to to changing so that somebody potentially likes you? And there's a huge possibility if you cut your hair, for example, they might still not be friends with you. Would it have been worth it? So it's always about reminding him, you know, you are an incredible person because of the qualities that you have, your adventure, you know, creativity, your humor. Those are the things that make you somebody that friends want to befriend you for, right? They want to be friends and hang out with you for. So make a difference in the world, lots of different things as to what we can do. In here, we've talked about recycling. They've given some great historical um, stories and not just based on male heroes. I like the fact that there's uh, a good balance. So I really do like this. There's a story here about how to turn failures into robots, but look what it says. And so she says, I'm not going to give up. And she tried again. I love this. We talk about get up, brush our shoulders off, and asking for help. Do not be ashamed for asking for help. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it makes you braver. That vulnerability is so important. Um, so... Tell me, what do you do with your children when they're going through struggles? How have you grown together? Drop me a comment. So growing up, like I said, that typical external influence of trying to look the part, you know, all the things that we do to beautify ourselves. And one of the things I want to emphasize a lot is how much societal expectations can impact your children. So like I said, I've been contacted by mothers to work with their young teen daughters and they might be suffering um, displaying kind of behaviours of disordered eating where they might be skipping lunch, they might have feelings about their bodies, they, you know, for us we're like, God you're perfect, but they might be like, I'm too fat, I don't look good. And there's a lot of pressures, you know, not just in school, but through movies, through magazines through Instagram, social media now. So, really good book for that. Body Happy Kids. I would really recommend this. Um, this is by Molly Forbes. Great Instagram account, super easy to follow. I was gonna base my lives this week um, on talking through some of the chapters in this book, but she really delves into diet culture, um, why we've ended up here, and it's important to recognize how this then influences our children. So if you have got any struggles around food, body image, I strongly suggest working with a professional like myself or someone that resonates with you. And on that journey, if you've got a good, a, you know, um, somebody that's got a great methodology, they will help you with tools that are extended within your family so you can share those with your children. But 
for those young teens and young women, I think it's important to try and get them away from pages like the, the Kardashians. Like, no disrespect to them as business women, great, but in terms of young women and the influences out there, people are paid to look and have bodies that look that way. Try and find some more um, social media accounts that are more reflective. I will be sharing them on my Instagram this week. I'll do that um, also in Facebook so that they can get a more balanced view, right? Uh, nobody has it together. We see people that we think have got it really together, but actually we're all winging it to some degree. And um, it's part of the reason why I love sharing my own mental health journey because I feel like, you know, if I could do this job and I have come from a really turbulent history with, with mental health, um, super emotionally volunt volatile, really bad with communication, passive aggressive, then, you know, I've gone and done the work, I have sought professional therapies, I have ongoing learning and development, there's just no one size fits all done. There is hope for each of us and that will look different for each of us. So yeah, get the right influence stuff in front of your kids. Like genuinely think about what they're consuming and they will be mirroring on you. Uh, and you probably don't want to hear this, but you are probably like over 80% of their behaviors because between zero and seven, they've picked up beliefs and behaviors and actions, language all through observing you. So share that. One of the key things I do at home with my kids, we explore the emotion wheel. We all talk about the fact that we all struggle with our emotions, but you know, we also say that sometimes I've not been so patient. Sometimes I've spoken in a way that I don't, feel proud of but look this is how we navigate after it so it's not always about the conflict of diff difficulty often it's the conflict resolution the things that you do and the pathways that you take to resolve the conflict um so yeah i hope you found this mini session helpful i'll be back tomorrow with another topic i'm going to be talking childhood nutrition and the impact on children's mental well-being. Please do join me, share your views, share your comments. How do you grow together with your children? What do you do when either of you are struggling? Do you hide your emotions from your kids? Do you, you know, cry in another room? Or do you share with the mummy's feeling sad right now? You know, often say, yeah, mummy and daddy, we're not very happy with each other. We will cross and now we've talked and we, we display behaviors of emotional stability it's not about avoiding conflict it's about how we resolve things together so i'm very honest and open with my kids um, and we have certain ground rules which i'll be talking about tomorrow which you know, if we break them they say well you didn't that was shouting that wasn't nice that was rude you know they hold us to account so it's a very mutual journey and i say to them i'm learning through you like being your parent i'm learning in the same way you'll be learning through me so it's really good that we hold one another to account they even if they're children and they're younger than us it doesn't mean that we always know best seeing life through their lens through their eyes can be really really impactful for us as adults because we don't want to just live in here we want to be open like a sponge to continue our learning as well so yeah um, journals, some great uh, behavioral gratitude journals out there, Happy Journal, Big Life Journal, Molly Forbes's Happy Body Happy Kids, and the Wheel of Emotions. You can dial it, Google it, sorry, uh, and find it. Great tool. Now let me go think about how I'm going to get back on Instagram. Damn it! See you tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Children's Mental Health Week. Share the word, spread the word.